One of history's greatest dreamers was Walt Disney, whose vivid imagination helped him to become the leading pioneer and innovator in the world of show business. Still, he looked far beyond his lifetime to the creation of a show place that could point the way to exciting and achievable new directions in future living. He called his dream Epcot, experimental prototype community of tomorrow. Opening in 1982 as an educational showcase of world culture and progress, Epcot aimed to provide a world-class experience and honor the original mission of the park, proposed by Walt Disney himself. However, in the mid-1990s, Epcot found itself in somewhat of an identity crisis, as guests began to thin out due to the more forgettable offerings of the park, a situation Epcot now finds itself in again not three decades later. To combat this reality, Imagineers were put to the task of moving the park's experience philosophy from education to more thrilling attractions aimed to inspire. While Disney was able to spruce up some attractions, none have been quite as distinguished as Chess Track. This video is extremely spoiler heavy, so if you've yet to ride, consider this your warning. Today we'll take an in-depth look into one of the most requested rides at Epcot, Test Track. We'll take a look at its challenging history, turn on the house lights and pop the hood to show you how this ride raced to the top as the fastest Disney ride. So sit back, relax, because this is how Test Track works. Construction for the first version of Test Track actually began before World of Motion, the ride that Test Track replaced, closed in 1996. With the construction of the outside section of the ride's track and later exterior work just after, the ride's equipment was installed over the next year. Initially, Disney intended to open Test Track as part of the revitalization of the park in 1997. But that opening year quickly came and went, and the ride hit numerous issues in development. Being far too complex and ambitious for their manufacturer-provided software and firmware, only a hard limit of eight vehicles were able to be operated at once. This was obviously not sufficient for Disney standards. Instead, Disney opted to decentralize the operations and create their own ride operations software and firmware for the operations computer and also for items as basic as the motor drivers. Test Track finally did open much later on December 19, 1998, to a standard reviews as guests were welcomed to the very 90s era industrial car shop featuring many demonstrations of various safety features to be tested on board the ride. In 2012, the sponsorship contract with General Motors, the original sponsor, ended and Chevrolet, a brand under the GM umbrella oddly enough, picked up the contract, but wanted to revitalize the ride to exude a more futuristic aesthetic involving the digital world of creating vehicles. The ride underwent an extensive refurbishment, where all the internal theming was completely removed. The real-world tests on an actual test track were replaced with a black light dark ride design, heavily inspired by Tron Legacy, where guests enter the sim track and their designs would be put to the test along the way. In the current queue of test track, guests file into a modernized Chevrolet concept car showroom. This queue features many displays not only of Chevrolet's ambitious designs, but also pays homage to the old queue through its mission of education through exploded view cars and an interactive car design experience. The vehicles and track groups of six riders load onto were contracted out and created by Dynamic Structures, a Canadian-based ride systems manufacturing division of a steel fabrication firm. Today, this division is known as Dynamic Attractions, creating many of the ride systems you've likely ridden. The layout of Test Track thrusts riders into many different scenarios as the car is carefully put to the test. Instead of being a constant speed ride through some sets, the ride system, Wayside, is able to create zones for each vehicle. In these zones, each car can speed up and slow down along the way. Sensors in each car's position data allows each car to stay a safe distance away from other cars while still delivering a thrilling experience. The layout features room for straightaways, rapid accelerations, 34 sharp, flat, and high bank turns, and a high-speed circular layout behind and around the building, all over 5,246 feet of track. 
Like many powered rides, Test Track employs a bus bar pickup system and rails to keep the vehicle powered. Under the surface, six bus bars service the vehicles throughout the layout. The lines are as follows. Three lines on one side provide 480 volts of three-phase AC power, which is picked up by four collector shoes per line. The three other lines consist of two data lines for the vehicles and wayside to communicate through, along with a ground line. Again, each also with four collector shoes per line. Above these bus bar pickup lines are two rails that the frame of the vehicles are attached to. We'll talk about those in a moment. Each of the ride's 31 cars features three internal computers under the hood and in the rear. One controls the show cues like lights, audio, and certain effects. Another controls the electric motor that is mounted in the back. The third computer communicates through the data lines to Wayside in order to control and know what the cars do and when in order to keep them perfectly distanced and stop them if need be. Each car contains over 75 safety features like seatbelt monitors and encoders that precisely monitor speeds, governed by about six high-impact braking systems. As mentioned, in the rear of the car is a large electric motor. This 480 volt, 250 horsepower motor uses a belt to turn all four tires, which are each capable of steering left and right. This helps the car navigate the hairpin turns along the layout. While Test Track is very much a family friendly ride, the vehicle hits speeds of just under 65 miles per hour during its final high speed run. Therefore, dynamic structures in Disney could not simply cram electronics into a regular car and send it careening down the road completely untethered. While the cars are powered electric vehicles, there are no major batteries to move them. Each car is therefore tethered to the bus bars as explained earlier, but is also mechanically fixed to the track. As far as many definitions go, Test Track is a slot car ride, but is much more than that. Under the surface are about 20 additional wheels that securely fix the car to the rails underneath. Four sets of guide wheel bogies with five wheels each attach the undercarriage of the cars through the slot to the rails, much like a roller coaster. Due to the nature of the vehicles and the fact they are essentially tethered driverless cars, they require around the clock maintenance to ensure their reliability. Each visible wheel or tire is really pushing the car, so each solid rubber tire needs to be rotated every two days and completely replaced weekly. Because of the mechanical connections that safely support and secure the cars to the roadway, Test Track has been able to safely throw gas all day every day for 50,000 miles each and every year. While Test Track was very much ahead of its time when built, it necessitated a ride system and style that has sparked some of the rides many park fans cherish and will continue to do so for years to come. I hope you've enjoyed this small dive into how Test Track works. If you still have questions, you can ask them below and let me know what your favorite ride is and I might try to make a video on it. Also make sure to take a look at our other How It Works videos in the iCard above. Please subscribe, ring the bell, and if you really enjoyed the video, please consider joining my Patreon where you can get early access to videos like these and more. Once again, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the parks.